Let's take a look at determining the least common multiple. Now what the least common multiple is, if you've got a set of numbers, that is the smallest number that all of your numbers will multiply into. So they will be getting larger, they'll be multiplying bigger, and what's the smallest one that all of them will multiply into? I do also need to point out, there's often some confusion between the greatest common factor and the least common multiple. And the confusion comes from the greatest and the word least. Greatest common factor, counterintuitively, usually ends up being a smaller number than what you started with. Least common multiple usually ends up being a number that is bigger than what you started with, which is counterintuitive even though the name says least. So greatest common factor is usually smaller. Lowest common multiple or least common multiple is usually larger. Just something you have to get your head around and you have to remember that. Let's start finding a least common multiple of these three numbers, 18, 20, and 30. I'm going to show you two methods. First method, we can just multiply them out. Let's start with, with 18. 18 times 1 is 18. 18 times 2 is 36. 18 times 3 is 54. 18 times 4 is 72. <laughs> and 180. And I'm going to stop there, even though I might need to come back and go further. I'm going to go and do the other two. And I'm looking for a factor in there that is the same to all of them. So I'm not sure how high I really do need to go. Let's do our multiples of 20. 20 times 1 is 20. 20 times 2 is 40. 20 times 3 is 60. 180. Oh, wait a minute. I see a common number there. Okay, let's not get too excited yet. Let's do multiples of 30 and see if it's got the same thing. So multiples of 30. 30 times 1 is 30. 30 times 2 is 60. 180. Oh, there we have it. I have found a multiple that is common to all three. There's nothing else that comes before it that's common to all three. That's the smallest one. Now, if we would keep on going with our multiples, we'd find other numbers that are also common, but they're bigger. And we're looking for the lowest, the least common multiple. So my lowest common multiple is 180. Okay, that's a time-consuming method. It's a little bit painful, but it works, and it will work every time. Let me go through method two, which is a lot faster. Let's try those same numbers in a second method. We're going to work with 18, 20, and 30. To start off, we're going to do prime factorization of each of those, and we're going to use those factors to find our lowest common multiple. Let's write out our prime factorization. 18 equals 2 times 3 times 3. I'm actually going to write it as 2 times 3 squared. This way makes more sense for this one, and I'll show you why in a minute. 20 equals 2 times 2 times 5, which I'm actually going to write as 2 squared times 5. And 30 equals 2 times 3 times 5, which is going to be the same thing. Okay, there, I've written it out in its prime factors. So when we're looking at the lowest common multiple, let's take a look. I'm going to write down all of the possible factors. I have twos, I have threes, and I have fives. And those are all the factors that I've got anywhere in any of those three prime factorizations. Next step is I'm going to find the one that has the most. So twos, the most twos I see anywhere is right there. There are two twos. So my lowest common multiple is going to be 2 to the power of, is going to have 2 to the power of 2. Looking at my 3s, the most number of 3s I see anywhere is 3 squared. So that will be 3 squared. And the most number of 5s I see anywhere, well, I see 2 with a 5. So it doesn't matter which I do, there's only one 5. I've got all my factors in there, and I've got the most that I find anywhere in those prime factorizations. So my lowest common multiple is 2 squared times 3 squared times 5. So my lowest common multiple, if I multiply those all out, should be 180, just like I found on the last one. So if I write out my steps, we do the prime factorization of each of our numbers. Our next step is to identify all of the factors. And our last step is we're going to look for the greatest power on each of those factors. And that leads us to our slowest common multiple. Let's do one more example. Let's find the lowest common multiple of 20, 36, and 38. Start with the prime factorization. Now I've broken down each of those numbers into its prime factors. Let's write those out. 
Once again, notice how I've written them out using powers. It's more convenient for this method. Our next step is to identify all of the factors we've got. We've got twos, we've got threes, I've got five in there. It looks like I've got a 19 as well. Let's identify the, the highest power we've got of each. Two twos is the most we've got. Doesn't matter if it shows up twice in two different places. I go for the biggest one. So two squared. If I look over here. I've got two threes. So that's going to be three squared. I've only got one five. So that's going to stay as a five. I've only got one 19. So that's going to stay as a 19. If I multiply those all together, my lowest common multiple equals 3,420. You're going to want to use this second method. It would take a long time to multiply by 20s to get up to 3,420. You'll get there, but it'll take more time than it's worth. So break it down into its prime factors. Use those factors to find our lowest common multiple. 